Hey guys, welcome to the fifth SAS tutorial. In this video, we will be looking at the different types of mix and arguments. So here I have the HTML for this example. It consists of two div elements, which we will be creating circles out of. I also have a second file for our SAS code, which I have already typed the selectors for each div element in the HTML file. We will start this example by first creating a mixin, which we will use to display a circle from the div element. I'm going to call this mixin circle, and it will have four properties, height, width, border radius, and background color. The height and width we will set to 30 pixels each, and the border radius will be half of the height and width of the element. And finally, we will set the background color to blue. Now that we have created this circle mixin, we can include the mixin and then see what we get in the browser. So at include, circle, and then the brackets. And again for the div2, save the file and refresh the browser. And there we go, we have two somewhat tiny circles that we have created using this circle mixin. So if we stopped here, this would be essentially what we learned in the last video. We will now be looking at passing arguments to the circle mixin, which allows us to change the values of the properties within the mixin. This makes the mixin more flexible. For example, if you want this circle to be 200 pixels wide, but you want this circle to only be 100 pixels wide, we can do this by passing the different width values to each of the circle mixins as arguments such as 200 pixels and 100 pixels. So now that we are passing these values to the mixin, we need to create an argument for these values. Let's call it radius. We will now be able to use this argument in the mixin as if it was a variable. So let's replace the property values with this argument radius. So now we are passing 200 pixels as the argument to the circle mixin, which will set the height and width to 200 pixels, and the border radius to half of 200 pixels, giving us the rounded corners, making the square element look like a circle. If we save and refresh the browser, you can see that we have two circles, one with the width of 200 pixels and one with the width of 100 pixels. Mixins can accept more than one argument, so let's add another for the background color. We can then pass the color to each of the circle mixins. This one can be red, and this one can be yellow. If we refresh the browser, now we have a red circle and a yellow circle. These arguments, radius and background color, can have what is called a default value assigned to them. This means if a value is not passed to the mixin, the argument will be the default value. To give an argument a default value, all you need to do is add a colon followed by the default value you want this argument to be set to. I will set the default value of the radius to 20 pixels, and the background color will be green. So this circle will take on the default values of 20 pixels and green, and this circle will use the 100 pixels and yellow values that we pass to it. Note that the order we set the arguments of the mixin is the same order as they are defined. So we have radius, then background color. We cannot do background color and then radius. This will not work because it will assign a yellow to the radius and 100 pixels to the background color. There is a way around this though which will let you put the arguments in any order that you like. All you need to do is tell the mixin what argument it is by putting the argument name in front of the value, like so. Now let's add a hover effect to the circle and add another argument to the mixin. Let's call it hover color and give it a default value of red. If we refresh the page and now hover over the circle, it will turn red. So you can see that you can add as many arguments to the mixin as you'd like. There is one other type of argument called a variable argument which is really handy when you, when you have an unknown number of values you want to pass to the mixin. To give you an example 
Let's, let's create another mixin and call it circle shadow. And I'll set the box shadow property to shadow. This shadow value is our variable argument. To tell the mixin that this is a variable, we type shadow and then three dots. The three dots after the argument name tells us that this is a variable argument. So if we include the mixin and pass it the values for the box shadow property, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, and the value 333. Three, three. Now refresh the page, and we can see that our circle has a shadow on it now. Another thing you can do is create a list of values and then pass the list to the, to the mixin through the variable argument. To show you how this works, let's give the circle mixin a value of values, followed by three dots, and then let's create a list of values. Values, colon, 200 pixels, blue, and orange. Now this list of values, 200 pixels, blue, and orange, will be passed to the circle mixin. If we refresh the browser, we can now see that one of our circles is blue, and when we hover over it, it will be color orange. That is it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.